Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we talk about uh, we talk about taste and rate batch number one and batch number three from Still 630's monthly single barrel releases. My name is Justine Mays. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Ake- Akeley, along with <laughs> hopefully our special guest that might show up at some point. Dave could show up. <laughs> yes, Dave is slated to be on the show. I don't know where he's at right now. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 well, we'll see. We'll see if he I shows up. I feel like we had this problem last time with Gary, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll hope for the best, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit, Justine. So I just recently got my new computer and I'm telling you, it is a nightmare getting a new computer because none of the passwords carry over from the old machine to the new machine. And I, do you realize how many passwords you have? And then I, I think I've got written down uh, about 50% of them. The other 50% I've had to start over on, and then that causes all kinds of problems. And then I've also got the situation where when I change it for my computer, uh, then, I, then it messes up my phone. So it's kind of a nightmare right now. Do you, do, do you feel my pain? No. Uh, no, because my computer is 12 years old. Oh. So you should feel the pain then, because you're facing this. It's imminent that you're going to be in my position at some point. I mean, I don't use my computer that often, only for this type of stuff. So I'm hoping that it hangs out for a couple more years. <laughs> you got an Apple computer, right? I have an Apple computer, yes. You got an iPhone. I have an iPhone, yes. Save all your passwords to keychain. And I don't know how to do all that stuff. I mean, He's not technology savvy. I mean, I'm 52 Did you years old. Who you were talking? To I'm 52. Now? I'm lucky I can even turn this stuff on. I, I and then it, I, the ways I have, I can pull up my, my, my password. So it's you know. I, the legend, that's the legend, folks. Uh, I, I'm going to show you how to do that. Yeah, you'll have to show me. It's some of the stuff it says, do you want to sync it up? And I, I, I hit yes. I don't know what that means. And then I'm worried, uh, you know, like I'll check because I have different emails. Does that, when it, when it says, do you want to sync your emails? Does that mean it just open up one email and all the emails come in? And how do I know if I, if I, if someone's reaching out to me to Steve Akeley, personal account or uh, Bourbon Zeppelin, which is our newsletter, or I have all this stuff separated. And Justine, it's it's a nightmare. Oh, I, can't I guess I need the legend. He's my IT department now. You guys should have done that while you were everybody. You should have done that while you were day drinking yesterday. <laughs> yeah. We were in no shape to to work on computers. Yeah. Yeah. I want to give everybody a hot tip, an IT tip right now, okay. especially for people that have been on one computer for a very long time and you're not accustomed to keeping track and typing in your passwords. Yes, this is Vicky, folks. Immediately go to sites, all of your social media, Facebook and such, and make sure that your cell phone number is listed as a recovery location because a lot of people have old email addresses they don't use anymore when you first launched facebook maybe you had your ex-wife's email address or some crazy right your cousins and so you cannot get back into your facebook page without your actual password and if you have an old account you never gave them your cell phone number or your current cell phone number to use for a secondary security backup and i've had to help people break into their facebook pages by you know, recreating okay. uh, email addresses like at Cox.net and all these strange places just so that they could get back in. So save yourself their trouble right all now. Right. Vicki, I've got a question for you. Right. I got a question for you. Yeah. So I used to have the Gmail email, uh, Steve Akeley at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. At some point, if you don't log in, do you lose it? And then can someone else get that? No, you oh. don't lose it by not logging on. They just quit there and stay okay. forever. I, I've got a question for you then. I swear I used to have that. And I was trying to add this to the computer. I thought, wait a minute, I used to have that, right? And so I, I do it. And the security question, uh, and it would have been long enough where I didn't have the cell phone tied in, like you're, the smart thing you're saying to do right now. Exactly. And it, so it said the only, the only way I could recover it was the security question. So I said, yes, I'll take the security question. The security question for Steve Akeley at gmail.com is, who's your baby daddy? <laughs> oh, aren't you funny? I swear to God, I, I thought that this is corporate stuff. What does that no, mean? No. That means that you were hilarious one night and you put that in as your security question. I don't think so. <laughs> I think Pretty that sure. Kat, Kat yeah. hacked into your, your uh, I don't know what's going on. and played a joke on you. <laughs> yes. I, so I don't, and I tried, I thought, well, I, I, me, I am, of course. Uh, no, I, I, I couldn't get it to work. I don't, uh, and it said, uh, you, sorry, you've lost it. Consider, and they gave me the advice, you know, consider getting a different uh, Gmail account. Yes. Uh, I, well, I wanted to see Akeley one. I thought that was good, but yeah. Yes. 
So, and then if you put yourself in hell like that, you know, you can try emailing and it takes, you know, days, if not weeks to beg and prove <laughs> who really are you and recover your old. I mean, it is possible, but you're at the mercy of somebody you'll never meet in person on the other side of a computer, hopefully answering your email. Yeah. 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 So was what, your old what? computer a Mac, Steve? Yes. Yes, it was. Did you, were all your passwords saved on it? Like, as in, like you didn't have to type them in? Uh, yes, correct. Correct. So th- if you dig in there, there's an application called Keychain. Yeah, that's what I was talking and, and that, yeah, that stores everything in there on your Mac. And you'll just have, you'll have to enter the computer password for that, for that Mac, but it'll show you all those passwords that were saved that you didn't have to type in. I, I, yeah, theoretically, I, I believe you, but it just hasn't worked that way. <laughs> now, now on Safari, uh, now that's on Safari, none of it works. I will say this on the other one, what's uh, Google Chrome, which I use too, that's all those passwords work for some reason. No, nothing, nothing's changed with Google. Anything I have access through Google Chrome is fine, but for some reason on Safari, it's all whoop, gone. Now I do have my old computer, which is, you know, still, but I'm going to be sending that in. I traded it in for eight bucks or something like that. So, uh, <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's not good. Things are not good. I, uh, 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 old guy getting a computer. I just, I just look at my, I, I, I'm setting this up now and I, I just see through my own eyes. I see my father setting it up, even though it's me setting it up, I can't do anything anymore. So I don't know. Uh, there you go. Justine, your computer's 12 years old. I, I, I can't wait till we have to get you. We're going to, I want your job to grow and grow till you have to get a new computer just so, so someone else can suffer like I've had to, because that's going to be 12 years. That's going to be a big shocker. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, well, I mean, it's not like I don't know how to use newer computers. My work computer is a laptop. And I, can use, well, I know how to use you know, new computers too. But, but the things do change. Like but, this one, that my new computer has a fingerprint scanner on it, which my old one didn't. So, you, you know. You, but I honestly, I really don't do that much from my computer. Yeah. So like, I mean, when I get a new phone, I'm probably going to be screwed. But oh, I, I've got a question for Vicky too. So Vicki, I primarily use uh, my computer, Facebook on my computer. And I noticed now it just, it doesn't work on Safari. It just redirects. It says it's redirecting. And it's just, it's just spastic. It's just going, blah, 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 blah. it won't even open up. Now I can do it. I can open it up on Chrome, but I can't open it up on, how yeah, do I fix that? that? If that's the case, you're at the mercy of somebody doing an update to the software that you're using. So if there's a conflict, that's not something that you can fix between Safari and Facebook. You're waiting for either your computer to do an update or for them to create an update on okay. Safari. You might not have the same conflict as most other people using Safari, but guaranteed there's at least a few that are having the same conflict that you are, but it is out of your control. Okay. I feel better about that. <laughs> All right. All right, Vicky Justine. Definitely keep Vicky on speed dial. Vicky, Vicky's on speed dial now. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she. I'll be calling her all the time. So yes. You give up. My, it is not your fault. Yes. My new best friend. All right. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go out to break. Uh, doing a, a cork pops. I've, I'm the only one who has the full size bottle. So I send the sample to Justine. Of course, everybody else here. So we're gonna go out on a cork pop on batch number one. So here we go. Let's see what we got. Maybe maybe we'll have them uh, since we got two. We'll have them. Oh, we get switch. All right. So that's that's one. Here's here's batch number three. I think, one one was, was better. I think one was slightly better. Okay. So there you go. One is better. Was that Lenny? <laughs> well, these, look at these bottles. I mean, they're, they're you know, it's, they're, they're, they're below the bottom label here. I mean, it's, they're well-loved as, as Those we say. real well-loved bottles. In the business, in the business. That's what we say. So, well, we'll take it to break on this. Cheers, gang. Cheers. Okay. We will take that quick break. And then when we come back, it's going to be time to get some tasting notes on batches one and three. It's a bonus episode today. We'll do that in just a few. Welcome back. Today on the show, we are reviewing batch one and batch three from Still 630 in St. Louis. It's a weird thing, right? So batch one and three, that's a, that's, it's weird to have one and three and already have done two. Uh, there was some rationale here. I don't know that it makes any sense, but... Dave announced he wasn't going to do his party, his first uh, Friday party uh, for January. And I thought that meant he wouldn't do a release that month, but he did. So I went ahead and did the one that, uh, that he released for December 1st, and then uh, which was number two, and then uh, number one I skipped, and then we're going back, and that's a whole thing. I, I, does, does that make any sense, Justine? No, it doesn't. <laughs> 
<laughs> Can you explain it any better than that? I don't. I guess it doesn't matter. For some reason, for reasons no one knows why, we're doing batch one and three on the show. <laughs> so uh, we'll see. The bonus. Uh, yeah, it's a bonus. So, Justine, we'll start it out. We're, we're you and I will, will get going, and we'll provide some some nosing and tasting notes, finishing notes, that type of thing. And then we'll go around the horn, and we'll get everybody else to weigh in on this, and and then we'll do the next one, number three, and then we'll score both. I think it's good to compare two side by side before we provide a score on either one. All right. Uh, do you want to go over like what Missouri bourbon is? I yeah. I mean, yeah. So uh, so. And basically, yeah, what, what Dave's doing with this program is he's releasing one barrel a month. They are all, all uh, qualify as Missouri bourbon, which means that every ingredient has to be sourced in Missouri. And it is <laughs> aged in Missouri, of course. And it is also um, stored in a Missouri um, cask. So uh, there are obviously some great options here. You can use Independent Stave Company, which has offices uh, in Lebanon, Missouri. And then there's another big uh, manufacturer in Cuba, Missouri. And then there's at least one more, maybe two more barrel manufacturers. So there's quite a few here. So we're kind of in the heart of, of barrel making country. So there are quite a few options. So it has to be all of that. Everything everything uh, is, is Missouri. I think even the glass, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be Missouri. But there is a, a large glass manufacturing plant here, and I would guess more than likely the glass is from Missouri as well. So on the nose, Justine, what do you think? Definitely getting oak. Oak, popcorn. Smells like bread to me. Bread, popcorn bread. Popcorn bread. <laughs> All right, let's give this thing a taste and see where we're at here. Very sweet up front. Um, let's see. And a roasted peanut. Roasted peanut, I think, is very good. That's a oh. that's a note that I'm uh, getting as well. This is ninety proof, just for the record. Looks like they're all 90 proof. So uh, every, every one of these that we, we do, we'll be comparing side by side the same proof, which is always good, I guess. I think roasted peanut is solid. I think that there's some light, I would say light caramel notes. So, I mean, you can get more of a scarch, uh, scarched, scorched caramel or, or you know, burnt caramel. This would be more of a lighter caramel, I would say. So, um, you know, maybe more of like a caramel pudding or something like that, I would say. Finish is warm, not oh, hot. It, it, it stays around for a little bit, don't you think? Yeah, it's got a nice, a nice hug to it. Yeah. For 90 proof. For 90 proof, for sure, yeah. Uh, let's ask some of the folks here on the call. I'm going to go just in the order that's on my screen. So the first uh, person that's on my screen is Mike. Mike, what, what are your thoughts on the nose and on the taste on this one i get yeah i get the i get the the roasted peanuts and but the i get this really odd thing on the nose almost like a like a corn taffy corn taffy okay just the yeah just the sweetness of it on the nose but yeah i, I like the finish of it it's not i mean it, it's not overly long and it's not not really long but it's got a good finish to it okay okay all right uh the legend how about you Okay, well, I'll look, I'll agree with the peanuts. Okay, uh, it's um, got a great corn flavor to it, and uh, I'll go along with Mike. It's got a nice finish, not overly long, but got a nice finish. Nice finish. Okay. Very, very drinkable. All right, all right, Matt Rainey, what about you? Uh, well, I'm getting sorry, I'm getting on the nose and palate all sweet corn. I'm getting corn nose, nose okay. and palate. Okay. It kind of uh, falls in line on me on the nose. I, I you know, I get the, the popcorn, which is going to be your grain. It's going to be your corn. So, yeah. yeah. Vicki, how about you? I'm just feeling the cinnamon. In addition to everything that I've heard already, I'm, okay. I'm getting a lot of cinnamon. Okay. All right. That's good. My buddy, Mr. Barton. You know, I, she just said the cinnamon. I did not, I, I knew it, it had a, a smooth flavor to it as I, took a drink of it but i gotta say it was very sweet 
uh-huh. and soothing. But that cinnamon, as soon as she said that, I'm like, that's what it is. Because I couldn't put my finger on what it was. I was tasting, and it definitely has a cinnamon flavor to it. And it's uh, very smooth. I mean, I've already tried the, the three after that. And I got to say, one, I was uh, very overly impressed compared to three already. Okay. Okay. So, all right, ma'am. So that's good. That's good. All right. And next up is going to be the Robinsons. Let's hear from the Robinsons what they think of this one. I get like buttered popcorn. Okay. Yeah. I get the buttered popcorn, but with maybe a little pepper on it. Hmm. A little pepper. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. And, I, right. and I'm catching the cinnamon as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so that's the good thing. When someone like, it, yeah. says that, all of a sudden you, you you go back, you revisit it. Like Tim was saying, you find it. That's that's okay. That's that, that's it. So that's why a group uh, tasting tends to be a good thing. Mister Bill is next on my screen. All of the above. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really good. I like the nose on it. Um, the flavor's not uh, real deep, but it's it's good. Yep. Okay. All right, Lorene, what about you? Well, I think Vicki hit it right on the nose. I was definitely getting the popcorn, but there was something else. And as soon as she said that, it was like, yep, that's exactly right. Yep, Ex- excellent. All right. And finally, Paul. And they definitely okay, so I get like a brown sugar more than a cinnamon, but um, it's definitely like a corn nut with brown sugar on it. It's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, very good. Very good. All right. Let's put this one for, aside for now. Again, we're going to come back to this because we are going to be voting on this. We're going to be providing a score on it. So let's put it aside just for the moment, though. And let's go ahead. And uh, if you haven't done so already, pour a drink of batch number three. All right. Okay. All right. Justine, you and I will start this thing out, and then we'll get feedback from the rest of the group. Different than the last one for sure. I'm getting uh, kind of a combination of things here on the nose. I would say some sort of cookies um, is is one of the things that I get. But there's a donut. donut, Okay. And there's also some sort of spicy element too that I'm picking up on. Or scotch or something. Butterscotch. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, let's give it a taste, Justine, see what you think. Okay. I would say this one's, the other one was sweet. This one's a little bit more on the savory side. Like a, I'm getting like a leather. Leather? Yeah, I think the, those uh, leather tobacco notes are definitely in this one. Um, a little bit earthier than the, than the previous one. So you're getting some of that. Different, totally different, different on the spectrum, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely not as warm either. Like I'm yeah. not, it's not lingering around for me like the first one. It seems to heat up a little bit kind of in the center of my palate, but then does dissipate pretty quickly. So uh, the last one was more of the lingering finish. So um, where it just kind of sticks around the whole palate and just kind of stays there and stays there and just stays there with you. This one, again, for me, heats up just mid mid palate and, and then heats up and then goes away. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Kind of get like a black pepper. Black yeah. pepper? Mm-hmm. Pepper, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, this seems to me one that I feel like the first one would pair with the dessert round and this one would pair better with your uh, main course. If you like, you're having a steak or something like that, it feels like this one would fit in better with that. So let's go around the horn here and uh, we're going to go reverse order this time. So I'm going to start at the bottom of my screen and I'm going to go with Paul to kick it off for us. His nose was a lot lighter um, palate, like the mouthfeel is a lot lighter, a lot thinner mm-hmm. also, but I get a lot of like, oak and leather. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, like I said, it's definitely lacks on the sweetness, but 
Um, still great, great yeah. core with the oak and the leather. Leather. Yeah, yeah. Lorraine, how about you? What are you thinking on this one? Definitely different than the other one. I don't, I don't taste any of that like caramel. Definitely more peppery spice mm -hmm. on this yeah. one. Yep, yep. Mr. Bill, as I taste it uh, two or three times, I'm noticing that. I am picking up that pepper, but the pepper is kind of in the background and it, it, it comes in later. Okay. But yeah, I like it. It's, it's got a light taste, but I still like it. Yeah. Yeah, I like it too. Again, I think they're very different. I'm struggling in my mind now. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and revisit them both side by side before we do our scoring portion of this because I, I like them both. It's just, which one am I going to like a little bit more? All right, the Robinsons, what are your thoughts? You know, when I when I first uh, smelled it, it's, it kind of hit me as like a spice cake, but then on the taste, it's it's not it doesn't have all that sweetness at all. It's kind of more grainy, uh, kind of hits you a little bit more back of the tongue a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really good. It's just it's just not as sweet as the other one. The the, mm -hmm. the sweet and savory comparison is a really good thing. Yeah, yeah. Justine, I did end up sending you that spreadsheet. I don't know if that came through the second time there, but you should have it. Tim, how about you, man? I definitely smelled the oak mm -hmm. going in, and the taste was, I couldn't taste it from the get-go, but towards the end, the pepper. You could definitely taste the spice of pepper mm -hmm. in there. And I got to ask a question, Steve. Mm -hmm. How does either one of these compare to this bottle that I have here that I've picked up? About three weeks ago, up it's still six there. It's, it's the same thing on the side though. You need to look on the as you look at the front label. Yep. Turn it to the left, and it'll okay. say batch number. What batch number do you have there? That's uh, on the bottom. batch number three. I saw this batch is batch three. three. So okay. this is the one you've got the one that we are tasting right that now. We're tasting. Okay, I was just wondering about that. So yeah. thank you. Yep. Yeah. So they release these. The official release is at the first Friday party. So it's that it's the first Friday of the month. So, and they will be doing that in February and you do need to sign up though. Uh, normally, you know, non COVID times you just show up and they do a toast. It's a very crowded, uh, literally it's a small place. It's an old Hardy's restaurant and literally they get Tim, you've been there for him. Rick, yeah. obviously you've been there a couple hundred people. Uh, sometimes right. they get them out the door. Uh, but obviously we are no longer in those times. You can't be that crowded. So they stage it. You get, uh, you get, you know, time in there, you, you set up, you sign up for a time, you have a specific amount yeah. of time in there, then you have to leave. And then, you know, next, so he does it like all wow. night, but just keeps repeating the same event again and again, you know, every, every hour or whatever it is. So. Like 12 people or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So he can only accommodate like 12 people at a time. So, yeah. So still it's first Friday. Yeah. It's first Friday, first Friday. Okay, of the month. Still. So, yeah, okay. yeah. Go to still 630.com yep. okay. if you want to get signed up. So, yeah. Right. Thank you. Vicky, how about you on the on the taste on this one? Any notes? Are you on mute there? Or sorry, did you see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I didn't know. I was like, did you say Vicky? Okay. So when you said cookie, of course, my first thought is snickerdoodle, but mm -hmm. it's a little bit more like I would say a toffee chunk cookie. Okay. So if you had, yeah, cookies that were made, you know, if mom was making you cookies, I do snickerdoodles, but yeah, chunks of toffee. I think that's the cookie that you're seeing. And uh, yeah, smoother creamier, caramely, toffee, and I do get the pepper. I see that. I see you. I see you. With the pepper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Rainey. Uh, I'm the, the, the nose. I'm getting a little bit of oak, a little bit of caramel, but the taste I'm getting all, all leather and pepper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are some classic you know, bourbon taste for sure. Leather, definitely. Pepper on your higher rye ones you tend to get. Mr. Brenner? Well, <clears throat> I'll go, um, I'll go with wet leather. Okay. Um, it's peppery. It's mm -hmm. savory. Um, it's a lot drier than the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Per se. This, this would go better with a steak. The other one might go better with dessert. <laughs> yeah. It felt like the that first one, a um, little bit different mouthfeel too, you know, and again, it makes sense. So the why that had that lingering finish is it more coated the, the mouth. So it stays there as opposed to this feels a little bit thinner, a little bit different uh, viscosity to, to the way to the product. So just never know what's going to happen in that barrel. Mike, how about you, man? 
I, yeah, I agree with everybody. I, I, it, it is, I, I like the, the cookie analogy to it. Um, not just cause I'm heavy, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's not, it's not desserty, you know, it's not overly, overly desserty whiskey, but it's just, it's just kind of, it's just kind of nice. It'd be a good first whiskey of the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, so now that I just want to throw something else in there. Sure. So now that I keep going back and like nosing it after I poured some more, it kind of, when you're talking about like the cookies and stuff, it kind of reminds me of like, my favorite cookie is a white chocolate macadamia nut cookie. And that's what I'm, I think that's what I'm getting. Like the mac, macadamia nut on the nose. Yeah. That's, that's a favorite of mine too. Love the macadamia nut cookie. And it is typically white chocolate for some reason. That's what usually pairs with the macadamia nut cookie, which I'm not necessarily always a big fan of the white chocolate, but it works with the macadamia nut cookie. Oh, I, love I don't white know. chocolate. Do you? To me, it tastes artificial a lot of times, but it does work with that, with that macadamia nut cookie for some reason. So, Not the, all white uh, chocolate is created equally. Most okay. white chocolate <laughs> is just junk candy. I will tell you right now, not all white chocolate is actually white chocolate. That's why you don't always like it. Okay. I'm also a baker. I'm also a baker. So. Vicky I'm knows about everything. I, I like Vicky knows about everything. Enchiladas ready to go, baby. Enchiladas. <laughs> we may just start doing these remote at Vicky's house. So yeah. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a haul all the way to Southern California. It's going to be a haul, but uh, the weather's nice, so it, it'll be worth it. Yep. So yeah. We can uh, we can uh, have her on all of future shows, and she can pair. Uh, Dave's bourbon with Hoots. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like uh, 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 we, uh, planes are going to be in our future anyway. So the ABV network plane. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're very close to making that happen. Very, I feel. All right. It is now time to score. Justine, I don't know what your system's going to be. I did send that spreadsheet over. I don't know if you want to use that, if you want to write it down, whatever you want to do. Um, we, will, we will move ahead. So what we're going to do is we're going to score these. So we're going to take just a little time to go back and compare and contrast the two because we're going to be scoring each. We're going to start we're, and we're going to go through. We'll do uh, batch one first, uh, but be thinking about your score on both of those. Compare and contrast a little bit before we get to that point. A little free work time. Uh, through the miracle of editing, I can cut out the, the blank space. Now that I go back and taste number one after just having number three, number one tastes like candy. Number one tastes like candy. I mean, just comparing it, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be locking in my scores. Again, you can go up to three digits. All right. Fun to do too. Uh, very interesting. All right, Justine, have you prepared? Are you ready to go scoring wise? For tonight's two offerings. You ready? Okay. All right. So Justine, you and I will go first. Uh, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? And we'll do, we'll flip that the next time. Uh, you can go first. I'll go first. Okay. Uh, so we were talking about batch number one first. Again, I liked it a lot. I gave it an 89.630, Justine. 89.630 is my score. Again, we're going out of 100. Zero if you are not a fan 100 if you think it's perfection, anything in between, up to three decimal points, three decimal points. Justine, you're gonna go second here. So I did 94.630. 94.630. You stole my 630, <laughs> by the way. I no, was the I only one, first. 
I was the only one who did that on the uh, on the first show. I, uh, that goes back. I copied that. From my you did copy that. You stole you stole mm-hmm. that from me. I, I Dave's a big numbers guy. It's so funny because he loves dates. It reminds me of my father. My father was big into dates and and numbers and you know he he chose you know retirement dates from both of his two main jobs based on cool dates. So I know he retired from the police department at, on nine nine ninety. Uh, and so that, that was uh, interesting. And then he, he retired from uh, his corporate job where I worked with him on 1031, whatever. I don't remember the year, but he just liked it because it was, that was uh, Halloween. But he always remembered, you know, different things by numbers. And Dave's big into that, too. I've noticed. Hey, you, know, you know what Dave did before he got into this? Uh, he was an actuary? I don't know. <laughs> no, he was a futures trader. Futures trader. There you yeah. go. <laughs> you know, like, the, the numbers he liked were, were dollars. So, yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That, that's a pretty good jump from that to this you know it's like okay yeah, yeah. so i'm going to start in the middle of my screen this time i've started at one end with mike uh, and then started at the reverse end so this time i'm going to start in the middle that means uh, mr brenner i'm going to start with you this time uh what is your score just on batch number one we'll talk about number three in a second just looking for batch number one score now i'm going to say a 95 one 95.1 okay okay all right uh, and Mr. Brenner got, he got a little heat for his score last time. I don't remember what you gave a score for batch number two, but Evan Van Skoik was furious with you because you gave two high score. And he's like, well, where do you go from there? You, you give us a score you like. There's no, <laughs> there's no, like, I need to save a higher score for down the road. No, you give it what you, you give it what you feel. So, all right. All right. Over it. Matt Rainey, you're next. Me next. I'm going to give it an 86.999. 86.99, almost an 87. It was almost. so close. Just mm-hmm. missed by the smallest of margins. All right, Vicki, how about you? I guess uh, tough critic. This isn't really my thing. So mm-hmm. I am going to have to give it a solid C, a 75. 75, right, right. 75 even, 75.0. All right, Mike, you're next. Uh, give it an 85. 85. Okay. All right. Even. Even. Tim Barton. I have to say I would give it a 93. 93. All right. All right. Melanie Robinson. 90. 90. Even numbers here. Neil Robinson. Like a 93. 93. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Lorraine. 91. 91. Okay. Paul. 85.5. 85.5. Okay. And finally, Mr. Bill. 89.5. 89.5. Okay. Okay. Let's, uh, let's hold off on the calculation, Justine. You can calculate that up and put it aside. Let's go ahead and uh, move on. We'll do a, a compare at the end. We'll, we'll, we'll save the, the big announcement for the end. Now we're going to be talking about what do we score batch number three. Now I went first last time, Justine. So that means you're going to start this one off. What is your score for batch number three? Uh, I did 88.963. 88.963. Okay. Okay. I, I like this one a little bit more out of the two. I ranked this one 91.630. 91.630. All right. Tim Barton. You're going to be the first one from the the crowd this time. Right now, I would have to say I would give this one. I don't care for this one as much as batch number one, but I got to say the more I've sampled it, the more it grows on me with the the pepper in there, but I have to say uh, 86. 86, okay. You've got the full bottle of number three there. You get about. I do it. Eh? We'll, we'll call you back and you'll give it a you'll give it a ninety eight. Uh, yeah, in about an hour, I would. Guess. You are correct. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's a full bottle either, by the way. <laughs> All right. Neil, how about you? Um, I'm at a, nine, a solid 90. Solid 90. Okay. Melanie. 91.56. 91.56. Okay. Laureen. 89.5. 89.5. Okay. Paul. 86.5. 86.5. And finally, Mr. Bill. 84.7. 84.7. Okay. No, I got to jump back up to the top now. I was working my way down from start to middle. So, Vicki, I'll, I'll kick it off with you, working my way from the middle up to the top now. Awesome. So. I was going to say, it won't be, the math won't be right if I don't get in there. 90 flat. <laughs> 90 flat. 90 flat. 90 flat. 90 yes. flat. 90 yep. flat. 90.001 or 90 flat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
still. It's 90 flat. Uh, it's not 90.001. It didn't qualify. All right. All right. Matt, you're next. I'm going to go 81.5. 81.5. Next up is Mr. Brenner. I'm going to go 95.25. 95.25. And finally, Mike Lissack. 86.375. Okay. All right. 86.375. Okay. Justine crunched the numbers. Uh, while she's doing that, I can show you, we do give away a prize package uh, for these things. I've got three things for you guys tonight. I've got the, uh, the coveted Colonel Steve pin. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> Colonel Steve pin. I've got the uh, bourbon Zeppelin or E magazine. I've got the bottle opener, two sided <laughs> bottle opener. You maybe you can open two beers at once i don't i don't actually know. <laughs> challenge uh, accepted yeah. and then finally uh i've got a vendome t-shirt yeah you can't exchange these things i'm sorry this just comes out of my own treasure trove things i've picked up or they've donated yeah. or whatever. this is a vendome extra large uh, long sleeve t-shirt so um it says uh keeping the world in good spirits on the back uh <laughs> says vendome down the right sleeve and then across the chest in the front, it says uh, Vendome Copper and Brass Works since 1903. So have that three, three things. That's a pretty good prize package there. So, uh, so and the, the a shirt, uh, of course, you know, Justine is, uh, does, handles our store and everything has to be like super soft. This t-shirt is super soft. Uh, hmm. So it's, uh, it's a big thing these days. You don't want to get a t-shirt that is anyway, I don't know, abrasive or anything. It's, it's gotta be super, it is. It's very, hmm. very good quality t-shirt. All right, Justine, are you ready to announce what our scores are? The uh, batch number one is 89.029. Okay. 89.029, okay. All right. And batch number three? Is 88.498. 88.498. Okay. So what will happen now is these will go on the ABV network website. They will live in perpetuity. Uh, as we say, because I paid, uh, accidentally paid the ABV network website for seven years. So uh, perpetuity for me is seven years. Uh, so it'll be uh, at least that long. Uh, I, they kept uh, Google. I mean, uh, GoDaddy was smart. They kept sending me the bill and I just kept paying it. I, I don't know why I just kept paying. And then I realized I had paid for seven years for this thing. And then I finally uh, got caught up and uh, realized that, um, yeah, I, I paid too much. So um, let's see here. And then we'll have a link to it. So our all-time number one rated is uh, batch number two at 91.262. So that's that was the score to beat. It did not get beat today. That's our all-time champion. Batch number one now is in second place, and batch number three is in third place. So that's, that's where we're at. We'll do this uh, on a monthly basis as long as Dave allows us to continue to do so. So it's kind of a fun thing. And we will also incorporate some future episodes where we will have some folks like Dave on here with us and interview him about the business. Justine, you ready? Did, did you, did, were you able to get the spreadsheet open? That way we can announce a winner here because I'm going to use, uh, see, I'm going to use a, a randomizer that starts mm -hmm. at four goes to 17 that covers everyone okay so just tell me what number they are again that four eliminates you and i it eliminates the the you know the top the, the you know the names and stuff and that so uh, with that i'm going to hit generate oh, oops generate and uh it'll pull up our number then you tell me who the number is okay it is number 10 number 10 who is bill lewis bill lewis you win the incredible prize package the t-shirt from vendome the Colonel Steve Penn and the uh, Urban Zeppelin beer opener. So congratulations. Awesome. <laughs> congratulations on that. Excellent. So appreciate you guys coming out and being part of this. We are going to do it on the last Sunday of the month. Again, the bourbon gets released on the first Friday of the month. We podcast on the last Sunday of the month. So be a part of it. It does get released to, to um, uh, the Bourbon Daily, which has a huge audience, 50,000 downloads a month. So a lot of people get to listen to this. And we also post it on uh, Bourbon Sasquatch, our video page as well. So a couple of different ways people can uh, find this and see what we got going on here. We'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Justine, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at ja underscore maze. You can find our shop at abbnetwork.com and on Instagram at abbnetworkshop. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website that thinks abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. 
Com. You can also look at all these previous shows and click on them. You can listen to the show to see how we came up with the score and you can see where the current uh, batch uh, rates. So that's going to be a fun thing as we build up over time. Right now we just have three in there, but over time we should have a nice database of scores. I would also encourage you to check out Still 630. They're literally Still 630 on all platforms. So you can check them out at their website, still630.com. You can check them out on any of the media, social media things at, at Still 630. Justine, anything else to say before we get out of here? Just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. Also, if you like what we're doing, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash ABV Network. All right. Great job today, gang. For our audience, we're going to have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Peace. Later. Bye. Thanks. All right. Yes. So that ends the official.